learning is a strange thing because you can think of it as just acquiring more information but you could also think of it, and this is more accurate, as finding out something that you're doing wrong so that's sort of built into you, like a character a character element of your character, a presumption of your perception, or a deep habit it's really built into you it's a neural structure, right? It's, it's alive and you have to kill it because it isn't working properly and the pain that you go through in part when you're suffering because you did something stupid is it's something like your, your the neurology I can never get this quite right it's the pain of the death of that structure and that can be a huge chunk of you, you know, if, if you really have to go through a massive revision it's like the person that comes out the other end might hardly be the same at all you know, that happens for example if you're trying to combat alcoholism which is just, you know, a wretched thing to do because well, all your friends are alcoholic <clears throat> all your family drinks too much the only thing you know how to do when you're socializing is to go to the bar and drink too much you know, and you spend like 20 hours a week on it it's like it's not just that you're addicted to the substance it's like that's how you live and so if you want to stop being an alcoholic not only do you have to stop drinking alcohol but you have to stop seeing all your drunk friends and maybe you've had them for your whole life and you have to have continual battles with your drunk family and then you have to figure out something to do with that 20 hours that's now like hanging around your neck like an albatross and so, you have to let that whole part of your personality die and a new part has to spring forth and that's what the phoenix is and the phoenix is the capacity of the person to transform and so, when Harry gets bit by the snake that freezes him he gets seriously injured, the phoenix comes in, cries some tears in his wound it repairs him, bang, he's back to life and the strange thing is that that's okay with all of the viewers now why would that be? there's nothing about it that's rational nothing right? magic castle? that's not rational giant snake underneath it? that's a little more rational <laughs> turning you to stone, going down there to face it being rejuvenated by a phoenix, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's okay, we can, we'll watch that, we'll, we'll swallow it, we'll be completely engaged in it, and the reason for that is because it's a myth it's about how people, it's a meta story about how to act, about how to conduct yourself in the world, to face the things that you're afraid of that would otherwise paralyze you, to let the death of what is insufficient about you occur, and then to wait for the Rebirth. Okay, so science is about what the world is. And myth and drama and dream and the unconscious, all of that. Let's say the aesthetic and artistic and fantastic side of humanity. That's more about how things should be. It's more about how to act. They're their lessons in how to act and their abstract lessons, people are capable of abstraction, right? so you say, well there's something good about you, and there's something good about you, and there's something good about you, and, and there's something bad about you, and you, and you, and so we'll take all the good things and make one good thing out of that, we'll take all the bad things and make one bad thing out of that and then we sort of understand the difference between good and bad and we get better and better and better and better at that over the centuries as we distill that and then we have a figure of ultimate good and a figure of ultimate evil and that helps us understand what those two things are those are the hostile brothers, that's a very common mythological motif and you could say, well they're at war inside you and, and I think that that's a universal truth 